it's finally time for me to bite the bullet and do something that I've been putting off for almost four or five months now, which is a Zwift 20 minute FTP test. Now doing an FTP test or a 20 minute test on its own probably isn't very exciting, but the nice thing is now we can compare it to a few different numbers. First and foremost, we can compare it to the Zwift FTP ramp test that I did where I got a result of 311 watts. Now, I've never claimed that I can hold 311 watts for any period of time, specifically, definitely not an hour. Um, I also did a video where I tried to hold 311 watts for as long as possible, and I lasted for about 16 and a half minutes. Now, that's probably out the question, but it does kind of give me a rough ballpark to aim for. The second thing that we can compare it to is actually what Zwift thinks my FTP is in the first place, and that comes up on your Zwift homepage. For me, it's 278. Zwift thinks, based on all my Zwift racing and all the rides that I do in the land of Watopia, that I could probably hold 278 watts roughly for an hour. I actually know that that might be a little bit on the low side, having held 285 watts going up out to Zwift the other night, but still, I'm not gonna argue with it. It's still nice to have a top end of 311 and then the 278 that the Zwift kind of itself is giving to me. So we're gonna do the Zwift FTP 20 minute test and see what figure comes out as a result. So stick around and find out. So guys, we are on the bike and ready to go. I am gonna take you through everything that is part of what the Zwift 20 minute FTP test involves. And as you can see on the left at the top, this is actually quite a long test. I think the entire test takes over 55 minutes, almost 60 minutes to get done. We are coming to, or getting near to the end of the warm up, And that is obviously the first part of the test. As you can see, if we work our way down on the top left, you obviously get the 10 minute warm up, and then you go through a series of three different ramps at certain wattages. You circle through that three times with no rest, five minute break. Then you go into a five minute above FTP threshold effort, followed by 10 minute recovery. Then you get the actual 20 minute FTP effort, and then you do your cool down, which obviously, usually I kind of skip, skip always skip the last part. Anyway, let's dive into the test itself and talk about some of the things and, and the way that I wanted to approach this. I obviously had a bit of a rough idea given that I've ridden a few times at a certain FTP or a certain wattage. So I went into this thinking that I was going to try and hold um, about 290, 295 if I could in terms of watts. I did find that I'm not great at being t incredibly consistent with my wattage. So what I was trying to do was just focus on my cadence and I knew that I was going to try and keep my cadence between 90 to 95 which was way more manageable and it kind of gave me less to worry about in terms of trying to hold that really steady wattage. So we are getting pretty close. I'm going to cut into different parts of the test obviously as we kind of di as dive through but before we dive into the actual 20 minutes of hard work one of the first things we do was this series of three ramps. Now, when you do go and select which FTP workout you want to do, once you go to the workout tab, you can actually set your predetermined FTP. So that's normally how you do a workout. You kind of adjust your FTP and that changes erg mode. I'm not entirely sure what Swift was basing my what zones on because none of this is done in erg mode. This is all in a free ride mode. So I'm basically having to shift through gears to get to certain wattages. Obviously, that's exactly what would happen when you come to do the actual FTP 20 minute effort slightly later. So I did find that quite interesting because previously for my lots of my workouts, I set my Zwift FTP at 308 and that way I can then kind of use the uh, add and minus buttons to adjust things slightly when I need to because not every workout is kind of catered to necessarily like my style of riding. So I will say I don't 100% kind of understand how or where Swift has pulled the numbers for my, you know, those series of three ramps where we go through one wattage, another wattage, and we, we up it a little bit, also up in the cadence at the same time, and also kind of I'm not sure what it bases this next part on which is my five minute at 340 watts which felt quite hard um, that would, that's quite a big effort for me 
So I don't know exactly what that's based on. I have a feeling it might be based on what I've kind of predetermined my FTP for workouts for. I will admit that I probably skipped through that bit quite quickly when I came to select the test and didn't actually pay enough attention. But here you'll see me basically trying to hold that 340 for the five minutes. And you can see that my heart rate gets quite high and I end up kind of building up, up and up, which is the whole point. I think the whole point of this the protocol is to stress and fatigue your body prior to getting to that 20 minute phase so that you get more of a like idea of what you were capable of holding for a prolonged period of time. So effectively what Swift is trying to do is initiate some level of fatigue prior to getting into the actual 20 minute protocol where you get to cycle on your own for 20 minutes and just hold it and try and maintain a steady TT base. So if we dive into some comments on the actual test and you can just kind of sit and watch a my cadence that I was trying to hold at 95 to 100 as we did this 340 effort and then also my heart rate starts building up 166 167 which is in, like I'm really happy with it in terms of heart rates as I mentioned uh, or as I, as I have said is I actually took a few days off um, not prior to this, I raced a couple of times before doing this, not on the same day, but days before. But I have had a few days off where I've effectively managed to get my heart rate to then get back into the higher realms of what I kind of would generally consider that it is capable of, which has been, which has been quite nice and comforting. Anyway, the test itself as we get ready to roll into it now. So you get your 10 minute recovery and that was held at 185 and then and we get close to basically having to just dive straight into the test. As I said, I basically wanted to hold, you know, maybe 295 watts for as long as possible, kind of off the start line, knowing that I wanted to kind of hold maybe an, a 90 RPM for the cadence 90 to 95. What I did tend to find or what I actually found was um, quite awkwardly, my gearing ratio for what I was from what I'm running on my bike just kind of made it really awkward and you might be able to hear me just like clicking up and down on the gears and you see me kind of changing between a slightly lower cadence and a slightly higher cadence um just i couldn't quite necessarily get that 100 percent comfort off you know, straight away and you know, that's kind of reflected in if you look at the bottom of the screen you can just see that my uh kind of wattage zones where i kind of bounce between the green and the yellow because i'm just not quite 100 percent dialed into my gearing ratio so it just didn't feel you know super comfortable and basically what I ended up settling on was that I'd rather have like a slightly higher cadence and just spin a little bit faster to produce my watts so it actually takes me a bit of time not a bit of time you know we're talking like 50 seconds 60 seconds to kind of find my rhythm with it in the first place but I thought that was quite interesting and it's something that I actually you know having not had a huge amount of experience when it comes to trying to hold a single particular wattage for a long period of time like I hadn't really anticipated having that particular problem and almost you know I was thinking that maybe I should have like dropped my cadence and gone for like a slightly harder gear and then kind of as the as the test progresses try to kind of go to an easier gear and then increase my cadence as we work our way through however I do settle into it and I kind of find that the best thing I can do is basically put my head down and I've got my phone in front of me like uh, just like in my eye line as, as I got my head down and all I'm focusing on the cadence trying to hold 192 sorry 192 hold 92 to 93 rpm and then I wasn't really worried about what that came out with in terms of wattage please bear in mind that when it says average watts we're 286 right when it comes up with average watts um, I basically was trying to hold, well, you know, I saw 286 and obviously having done the Alp with uh, 285 average effort, I was like, well, that seems like a good number to try and kind of bounce around and stay steady. I will be completely honest with you guys. I wanted to make 10 minutes and then see whether I could just nudge up a little bit. That was going to be the plan. If I could effectively negative split this 20 minute effort, then that would be great. You will see that obviously every time my wattage on the bottom of the screen dies back into green, it's that's not necessarily it's it's me being uncomfortable. Like the, I am getting less smooth with it. I'm struggling a little bit with it. And then this is actually the first point where I have to effectively drop gears and just spin higher. 
so we've made it a good kind of 13 or, or 12 and a bit minutes and then i just suddenly kind of found that it was getting higher i think part of this might have been because effectively i rode this as consistent as possible which makes perfect sense because well i don't know it just seemed to make perfect sense try and be incredibly consistent and just hold it for 20 minutes whereas when i did the out to swift and and maintain that effort the first x amount of time i was working harder so i went harder and then would basically had a bit of variability in like the way that i was cycling in that i was changing my cadence i was changing my kind of uh, the my gearing ratios so that i was working a bit harder at the start and then it became or it felt relatively a little bit easier with this effort i just decided to try and be as smooth as possible and try and hold one thing you can see now on the bottom of the screen where it's gone green slash blue for a little bit because I was actually struggling and I started to find it really hard and I decided that the best thing I could actually do was to click down a gear, make it a little bit easier, keep my cadence reasonably the same and then ergo if you do the maths on that I produce less watts. So that's like a little recovery phase and I thought well once we get to five minutes uh, I can then try and like build back in to that slightly stronger last five minute finish if you will so that you know or, or kind of just try and give myself a little bit of recovery because i just i was finding it really hard and then as you can see my average wattage starts dropping and we're at 281 bear in mind that when it comes to actually working out what my ftp is that 281 figure or that average figure then i think it's like 95 percent of that becomes your representative figure for a theoretical ftp so we're coming into the last minute and a and a bit here and the, the nice thing is once we get into three minutes or once you get into three minutes because i can do the maths on that as a, as 180 seconds kind of it feels so much more manageable <laughs> so i that became seconds to me rather than minutes so from three minutes onwards i kind of try to dig back in and get back into the vibe and then obviously with the last 50 seconds and just feeling like i can nudge up that average wattage a little bit but I didn't go completely crazy. I wasn't sure whether you're meant to like jump out the saddle and try and hammer it and put everything into it or whether you're just trying to like maybe dig out extra stronger watts. I, you know, I wasn't too sure whether that's, it, that feels like it's a less even effort which then might result in a less accurate result. So I thought, I mean, I'm not saying I didn't put extra effort into the last, especially the last 20 seconds, but it, I didn't feel like I was meant to jump out the saddle and start hammering it because I think that would probably imply that I might have maybe misjudged, you know, the the first 19 minutes of it if you're out the saddle doing eight nine hundred thousand watts. So we cross the line and then I get a new FTP of 269, which isn't too far off the 278 that Swift predicted me in the first place, guys. I will see you in a second. So there we go guys, just to wrap this up nice and quickly, my 20 minute Zwift FTP test comes out at 269, my Zwift ramp test came out at 311, and then also I have held 285 for 52 minutes whilst going up out to Zwift. If I had been a bit more cautious with my pacing a little bit, would it have come out a little bit more even given that I had a bit of a drop after an X amount of time or 13, 14 minutes whilst in the test? Maybe, perhaps. Was I affected a little bit by fatigue? Maybe, perhaps. But the nice thing is, or what I would say is, that I probably wouldn't repeat the 20 minute protocol too often. And that, because it basically, it was 60 minutes and it functions as a really tough, aggressive workout. And it feels very much a little bit like Zwift racing, but at a consistent pace. Whereas an FTP test, uh, a ramp test takes less time. And I feel like I would do it more often. It's slightly less intimidating, takes slightly less time and is not quite as aggressive in terms of fatiguing me afterwards. So my point is that these things are really just really good barometers as to whether you are improving when it comes to training. You do a 20 minute Zwift FTP test one month, you do one a couple of months later and see whether you improve. But also the same thing works with a Zwift ramp test. So kind of pick your poison and decide which one is more kind of beneficial to you. You will always get a good idea of what your Zwift FTP is 
kind of A, based on what Swift actually tells you, because 269 is not too far away from the 278 that Swift has predicted my FTP to be, based on just all the riding that I'm doing. But what we are finding out is that I'm still nowhere near the four watts per kg mark, so I've got a lot of work to do, but I'm not afraid to put it in. There you go, guys, that's the wrap on my little Swift efforts, and I've finally done Swift ramp test, Swift FTP test, and I've got pretty close, 52 minutes to doing a full hour kind of effort on Zwift as well to kind of give me a rough idea. And we do have a good idea of what my FTP is now, but still, I hopefully will see you guys at a race soon.